Hello, my name is Larry Tatum. Welcome to my video on Kempel Forms. Today I'm going to teach you Form 4, the longest of all the forms in the Kempel system. It's very intricate, it's lengthy, and cardiovascularly speaking, it's one of the best forms to do. It's going to take some time to learn, so let's get started right now. All right, now like the other forms, it has its salutation. It has two sides, and they're both interwoven together. All right, so we start with four long fingers, indicating the right side as well as the left. We do our salutation, pull it back, bring the hands through as you've learned in the other videos, and back to the attention stance. Now from the attention stance begins the first technique. Now what I'm going to do is take my left leg, step off 45 degree angle, it's going to be 10 o'clock. And as I step off, I'm going to do a left inward parry. I'm going to come underneath it from that horse stance with a right extended outward block. And as I do, I'm going to pivot into a left forward bow. Now try not to overextend. A lot of people do this for showmanship and it looks spectacular, but as we'll find out as we break this kata down a little bit, it's not very wise technique speaking. All right, so inward parry, come up with an extended outward, lock it in position. You can do it with the hand closed or the hand open. All right, from this position now, although I'm in a forward bow off to 10 o'clock, I'm going to be looking approximately at 1 o'clock or 1.30. From here, I'm going to pull the hand in. I'm going to execute a left thrusting finger poke at the same time, a right front snap kick. They're going to be done simultaneously as I pull my hand back. At that point, I'm going to plant back towards facing 12 o'clock, do a right inward elbow, do a left finger thrust and elbow over my shoulder. From here, I'm going to do a finger thrust in front of me with a left hand sword behind me. From here, I'm going to close my fist, do two hammer fists, one coming up with my left hand and one coming back behind me with my right hand. At this point, I'm going to break, and as we break, as we did in some of the earlier videos, that's exactly what occurs. At this point, we snap, we make a break, we thrust two back knuckles out diagonally to our sides. At this point, we're going to go to a concave stance and thrust our right hand over our left. And the knees come together, the toes go in, and from this point, I want you to drag your right leg into your left. Come to the tension stance, hands down to your side. And that completes the first side of that technique. Now we go to the left. We're going to step this time on 45, but to 2 o'clock. And as I step, I face 10, do a right inward parry, a left extended outward, go to a forward bow. Hand can be open or closed. I'm going to poke again with my right hand, kick, pull the hand back at the same time, plant with a left inward elbow, finger poke behind me, hand sword behind me, thrusting fingers in front of me, close my fists, back knuckle, hammer fist in front and back, break, two back knuckles, and at this point we're going to go into a right 45 degree cat stance to 2 o'clock. And as we move to that, we're going to drop back and bring a left inward forward and our cock our right hand to the hip. As we found out in the other videos, a hand that cocks back is not necessarily not checking or doesn't have any meaning, but it can have a lot of meaning. We'll explore that after we teach this. All right, I go to my cat stance. At this point, I'm going to do a right, what we call a threading movement, finger poke right through the inward block. But it's important that when you do this, that you don't drop the arm too much when you do it. Keep it up as much as possible, execute the poke, and a snap kick with the lead leg at the same time. Step over to a 45, which is approximately 4 o'clock, facing 10 o'clock. And as we do that, we're going to now do it on the left side. Right inward block, straight left finger poke, kick from a cat stance, plant in a left neutral bow, drop our right ba leg back. Just a little step. This is an adjustment. Now watch again. We were here before, block, kick and poke, block, kick and poke, plant, plant. Do a right downward block, a left outward. Shuffle forward. Give me a right outward and a left downward. Then an overhead claw, and then a back knuckle with the left hand. The bottom hand comes down and checks. Now I take my left leg, step back on a 45, which is 8 o'clock. Do a right outward block and a left downward block. Shuffle forward, give me the reverse of that, all right, or the opposite, I should say, then a claw and a back knuckle. From this point, we're going to step back to 6 o'clock with our right leg, 
into a left neutral bow, but we're only going to be there for a brief moment as we pivot into a reverse closed kneel. Now what happens here is we're going to parry with our right hand and do a left diagonal horizontal heel palm. So they're both going to work together. You drop into your closed kneel, let the hands go down to the right knee, and we're going to make a figure eight. This is the position that our hands, that's the path that they're going to travel. So we're going to go to the top of the figure eight on the left side, up to the top on the right, back down the bottom on the left, and what we're doing is we're heel palming and grabbing, left back knuckle, right claw, as we go down to a wide kneel at this point. Go down to a closed kneel, wide kneel, and then around to a closed kneel again. At this time, we're doing two punches, a left over right. All right, from this point, the hands are crossed, and you'll find out in this form that it's no more than zigzagging X's all throughout the kata. Not only with the hands, but with the feet. And remember, the feet dictate where the hands go. So we're going to zigzag an X. Right about here's an X here. See the cross? Then we come down, here's our X here. Now I cross behind, so I actually have a cross with my feet. Now from that position into a clo right closed kneel, I step back, I bring my X up, which is my arms, unwind, and do it on this side. Heel palm and grab, close kneel, wide kneel with the back knuckle and heel palm, close kneel with two punches. Now, here's my zigzagging X. I bring it around and come around on this side, and as I come out of that position, I'm gonna step into a right front twist stance, which is no more than an X. That's all it is, but it's going from one side to another all the way through. So I pick it up here, come around and do a right extended outward block, cock my left hand to my hip, step out into a left neutral bow. And as I step out of it, I do a left inward block and cock my right hand to my hip. From this point, I go to a left forward bow, do a right inward elbow. The inward block now turns into what? It turns into a check. All right, I pivot back to a neutral, executing an elbow, a right outward hand sword, a left inward hand sword as I drop to what? A closed kneel. This hand now turns to a check, the left hand does, and I come back into a wide kneel and execute a right thrusting hand sword. All right, from this position now, we're going to go to the opposite side. We're going to take our left leg and begin that zigzagging X as we cross over. And as I do, I take my bottom hand, my left hand, bring it around. And as I bring it around, it does no more than do what? An extended outward block as the right hand is cocked to the hip. From here, I step out into a right neutral bow and execute a right inward block, cocking my left hand at my hip. The blocking hand turns into a check. Go to a forward bow, inward elbow again. Neutral bow, a little bit of an elbow and claw with the top hand. Chop as I start my closed kneel. This is an outward hand sword, right inward hand sword wide kneel, and then it circles. Both hands come back into play again as you go down to the wide kneel. Now, from here, I take my left leg, step over to a horse, and I'm on the line between 12 and 6 o'clock. And as I do it, I wipe my hands clean right into a cocking position or a chambered position. I do a left inward parry as I circle both hands in, and what? A right horizontal middle knuckle. And they both pass each other right at the center. This hand parries, this hand crosses. We come out with a right outward hand sword horizontally parallel to the ground. I step into a right neutral bow and execute a right inward sandwiching elbow. Now, it's important to understand that that elbow is a collapsing elbow. It doesn't cock and then hit, but rather it just stays where it is and it collapses into itself. Now, from that point, you take your left leg, cross all the way around to 9 o'clock, unwind, facing the opposite direction. And now the hands do the same thing, except now it's a left middle knuckle and a right inward parry, chop, and come through with that collapsing elbow. From here, with the hands in this position, we step to 10 o'clock with our left leg. And as I step, I cradle. This is called a cradling motion. Now that means that I could have somebody locked into this position and I could be dragging them with me. There's a lot of options in there. But we're going to cradle it right at the waist, bring it up over our head into a left forward bow. 
At this point, we pivot out to a left neutral bow as we make a little roof over our heads with two claws. Don't extend them too far, but they just keep them within that outer rim. And we've learned that in the other tapes. As I bring those claws down, I go to a forward bow again, claw and grab with the right hand, and this hand checks at the bend of the elbow. From here, I shuffle forward, execute a right pulling claw hand and a left back knuckle. Now, as I pivot, though, I pivot into a neutral stance. All right. I take now both hands. The left hand continues flowing as the right hand curls over the top, and I do a crossover with my left foot. I step out, cradle it again, and do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, now from this point, we're going to take our right leg and we're going to step all the way around to what? And that's 2 o'clock, because we're working basically <clears throat> on 45 degree angles. So from here, we're going to step around. And as I do it, I'm going to go into a left front twist stance. And I'm going to do a right downward parry and a left inward parry with my hands. And make sure that you drop low enough on this stance. Keep your back straight, head erect. Step out into a right neutral bow as you simultaneously do a right outward parry. Keep stepping on the same line with your left leg as you cock both hands to your left hip. And I want the left over the right hand. And from that point on the same line, pivot towards 10 o'clock and do that same punch that we did earlier in the form. And that's no more than a what? It's an X. Remember this cot that was built around that. Then we make our punches. From here, I want a left heel palm claw and check, and then a right vertical back knuckle. And they work in the center lines of your body. I don't want it over to your right shoulder or over to your left. Straight ahead. Take your right hand, circle it counterclockwise, hook. And now we're going to complement the angle of our arm. We're going to track down our arm as we sweep with our left foot towards another 45 degree angle, which is 2 o'clock. We're going to sweep towards that, track down the arm, and poke back towards 8 o'clock, the same line that we were working on between 8 and 2. Hook, sweep, poke. Unwind and leave your hands alone. Just leave them right where they are. All right, that's important. Learn that now. Poke, leave your hands where they are, and just unwind facing 2 o'clock. From here, drop back, do a left downward parry. Drop back to your left foot so you're in a right front twist stance. A left inward parry at this point. Step out, outward parry. Cock your hands this time, the right over the left. Punch, center of the body, claw, back knuckle, hook. This time, the hook is what? Clockwise. Hook, sweep, poke. Hand is down and checking. You should come down this low enough to solidify your base as well. Chin is erect, good posture on this point. From here, step out to 9 o'clock, do a left inward block into a left neutral bow, and just let that poking hand drop down in position. And imagine blocking somebody's arm, and it circles in after the block, and you're going to strike with the forearm or the hammer fist. <laughs> so we're going to parry, hook, inward block. Shuffle forward into a wide kneel. Execute your, your strike and cock the other hand, fist, up to your left ear. Pivot in the opposite direction into a closed kneel and hammer. And make sure that that hammer is parallel to the ground. Don't do this. Now, in reality, we've hit the opponent on the kidney. Now make sure that when you're practicing this form, as you go into that shot from your wide kneel to a closed kneel, that that hand stops parallel to the ground. Don't let it go all the way through, because if it does, what you're telling me is that you've amputated that person's body. Okay, So you've got to know where to stop your strikes, especially when you're practicing your katas. If you stop in the right place, then you're going to develop the form and the focus that you want there. All right, so we come through, hammer okay, into a right closed kneel. If I was looking this way, it'd be a left closed kneel. Now, from this position, I'm going to hammer again. Don't hammer the same spot. Now, that's a typical mistake when people are doing this particular form. If that's the kidney, then that's got to be his neck. All right, so we'll go for the neck, but not for the kidney again. So from that position, one, two, close kneel here, and make the left hand come down to check at the same time. Again, this is parallel to the mat. From that position, I want you to drop back facing 10 o'clock. As you drop back, circle your right hand back, left hand up. And if you follow these circles, they get a little intricate, but you can do it. 
And so if this goes counterclockwise, and this left hand goes clockwise. All right, so from this position here, that's what they're doing. And as they finish their circles, this is in a checking position as this goes into a what? Into a striking position. One, two. Now from here, bring your right hand up as if it's going to do an upward parry. And the left hand strikes as you're going into a right forward bow. From here, keep the right hand circling. It's coming in on its own orbit and shuffle forward into a neutral bow now. And heel, palm, and claw. And let this hand to check at the same time. Watch this technique again. We came out of the hook and the poke, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now the next move is I want you to do an in-place twist stance. I want it to be towards your left. In my case, it would be counterclockwise. And as I twist, I do the centrifugal force. I let the centrifugal force of the twist launch a left reverse hammer fist and cock my right hand up to my ear. I step out of it towards 3 o'clock. Remember, you're 12 o'clock. With a right inward block, I shuffle forward into a right wide kneel, make my strike. I'm going to do the same thing on this side as I did on the other. Watch my hands. There's the forward bow. There's the neutral. All right, now the next move is I'm going to take my right leg. I'm going to step all the way behind my lead leg. And as I do it, I'm going to step towards 2 o'clock and look at 8 o'clock. And as I look, I'm going to do a right downward block and cock chamber my left hand. So from this position, it's going to look like this. Now from that position, I'm going to unwind to 8 o'clock and do a left inward block. I'm going to make a slight circle. Some people like to do it up high. I want that circle just to be about waist high with the bottom hand. And it's going to be a clockwise circle. It's coming to your right. You sweep, plant in a twist stance. And I want you to take your hand and cup it like so. This is called the monkey hand. It can be done with a claw. It can be done with a fist. But I want it done with the monkey hand. So from here, you're going to hook it, circle it. And you're going to check and land into a right front twist stance. Now you're going to turn and look at 4 o'clock, take your left leg and step back to 10 o'clock and do a downward block and chamber your right arm. From here, unwind to a right neutral bow facing what? 4 o'clock. <clears throat> From 4 o'clock, we're going to make that circle now with the left hand, and it's going to be what? Counterclockwise. If you do it clockwise on one side, I guarantee you it's going to be the opposite on the other side. It gives you a little hint to how these forms were developed. All right, now from here, counterclockwise, sweep, grab with that monkey hand, and plant. Now from here, we're going to step over with our right leg to that next 45, which is what, 8 o'clock, right? And you notice that this is, like I said, zigzagging X's. Now we're going to zigzag. We're going to go over to this position. All right, now from this position, we're going to take our right leg and step to 8 o'clock. And as I do, I'm going to do a universal block with a right inward block and a left downward block. And they're going to cross closely together. There's that X again. All right, so from this position, they're going to, we're going to cross them at this point into a right neutral bow facing what? 8 o'clock. Now, from here, I'm going to go to a right forward bow and do a right upward parry and a straight heel palm strike with my left hand. Now, this frames my head well. And then I'm going to pivot back to a neutral bow and reverse the circles. And that's all that is, basically, is reversing circles at this point. Now I'm going to take my left leg and step over to 4 o'clock and do a universal block on this side with the right hand over the left. Now I go to the reversing circles, just like I did on the other side. At this point now, I take my left leg and I hop back on that 45, which is what? 2 o'clock. As I drop back to 2 o'clock, I take my hands and I complement the angle of my body with it. This angle follows this angle. This angle follows that angle here. This angle here follows my chest and so forth. So out of this position, I drop back, still facing 8 o'clock. I now drop my left hand, bring my right hand on top of it in a figure 8, and pull. And as I pull out of that figure 8, I'm going to do a right snap kick. Now I'm going to hop over to 10 o'clock and face 4 o'clock. And my hands now, again, they move in the same position, except the right is over the left. I bring that hand down, circle my left, 
in that figure eight, make a pull and kick. Face six o'clock in a horse stance. All right, now that, let's go back a little ways. <laughs> so we went from here to this, to the reversing circles. Notice the stance changes and the fluidity in it and the horse stance. Now from this point, what I'm going to do is pivot into a right 45 degree cat stance with a right inward parry facing 9 o'clock, a left inward parry, front snap kick, and a right vertical back knuckle. Now the way that's executed is every move has its own little orbit. And that means as my hands start, none of the hands are really stopping. It's not done one, two, three, four. In fact, watch my right hand. And you'll see that my right hand moves without my left on its own orbit, its own separate orbits as well. If I interject the left hand, that's what you're going to see. The same thing happens now on the opposite side. I'll do it at a slight angle so you can see it. But after I came out of the right side, the left side is already set up for the first move. All I have to do is parry, kick, punch. But we're going to go from this side right into the left. Then I'm going to face 6 o'clock. And as I do, I'm going to bring my hands over again. And there's that cross or that X. And as I bring my hands in front of me, I'm going to do a right upward block and a straight heel palm thrust with my left hand. Then I'm going to start windmilling. And windmilling looks no more, it looks like this. It's all it is. So as I do my upward block heel palm strike, I'm going to circle clockwise and counterclockwise with the other hand. And look how my fist starts to close here. And then I circle clockwise and counterclockwise with the left hand. So it should look like this. Follow my hands. And then I come out of it with a right inward block, finger slice, and I etch this slice in. And then I relax the hand and just launch the hands like they were a tassel. They're flicking. Block, etch it in, relax it, slice it. Hook over to the opposite side. See the shape of my hand? Inward block, slice it in, relax it, and flick it. Put the hands back to back. From this position, come up, flick with the back of the fingers, with the index fingers, with the thumbs, the little fingers, and the thumbs pull out. Watch that again. One, two, three, four. Now you notice that so far, four and four, well, you might say it's the workhorse of the system. It has a little bit of everything that all the katas have. All right. It has finger work now. One, two, three, four. And I keep repeating those four counts. That's to give you an idea that most, in fact, all the techniques are built on fours. And you go back through the other katas, you'll find the same thing out. Short three has three moves in, in the major techniques. But it doesn't mean that there aren't intermittent little moves in between it, which there are. But for the foundation of the form, it all has one, two, three, four. And if we go back to the beginning, it went one, two, three, four. All right. This will give you something to play with. All right, now after we've done the fingers, I want you to take your hands right over left, claw down to your waist, and just as you get down, drop back with your right leg into a left forward bow. At that point, here's that X again, we're going to pull it to the left side of your body, do a right back knuckle, a left heel palm claw, do a right front snap kick, and plant back to the forward bow and sandwich the hands, the left hand on the right. Make our X, bring it on the opposite side, the same way. Kick, back knuckle. Now, the next part, it's a little bit harder, but you can get adjusted to it, is all I want you to do is drop down onto your left knee. And as you drop down, you're going to chamber your left hand, and you're going to have your right hand cocked out in front of you. At this point, we're going to do a step drag. Now, we learned what a step drag is probably in the second video that we did on footwork. But a step drag, we step, drag the rear leg, and do a forearm, inside forearm parry. We grab with our left hand and collapse the back knuckle down into that. So it was no more than dropping down, 
step drag, grab, drop it in. And just let it relax, let it go relax. Now I want you to switch in place without gaining too much height as you do it. All right, you can hop up a little bit, but don't over-exaggerate it. Now from here, I want you to step drag, inside parry, grab, and hit. Okay, now the next move is I want you to hop or jump up to a cat stance, a left 45 cat stance. I want you to cock your right fist up to your right ear. And the left hand is going to be in a checking position in front of you, right over the left knee. So from that position, we're going to come up to this position here. From here, I want a left thrusting sweep kick, a left inward parry, and a right raking hammer fist. Then I want you to hop in place, do a right back knuckle, at the same time, a right side kick. So it looks a little bit something like this. Then you do it on the other side. The hands switch. This hand cocks up. Then you do it on the other side. Cock both your hands to your left hip. Step over to 8 o'clock. From here, pivot out to 9 o'clock with an inward, outward block, rather, and a left front thrust punch. From here, drop down and rotate your right fist counterclockwise. It's to my left. Hammer and parry. Continue the motion. So it's overlapping figure eights. So we're going to go one, claw, and chop. Punch, hammer, claw, chop. And you see how my left hand takes up where my right hand was. So you're protecting yourself, all right? So from here we go one, two, three, and four. It's down here. Cock your hands to your left hip, and as you do it, I want a right side kick over to that 45, which is 10 o'clock. All right, from there, step over to 4 o'clock and cock your hands to your right hip, pivot out. Do the same thing on this side, but now we're facing 2 o'clock. Claw, drop down, chop. Cock your hands to your right hip. As you do it, execute a side kick over to that angle. Face the front in a horse stance. From this position here, I want you to do, I want you to step into a right neutral bow and use a right inward block and a left downward block. It's no more than a universal block. And at the, as, just as your bottom hand gets there, there, you start to separate them. And as you separate them, they're traveling on different orbits now, so you're going to go inward and hand sword. Okay, now from the hand sword with your right hand, which is an outward hand sword, I want you to circle the, the moves. You're going to have a finger poke as you go to a right forward bow, but the right hand is going to begin to what? Have its own orbit and circle back in. So again, we came across, poke, circle, and strike with the left hand on top and a right vertical hand sword. All right, from this position now, I want you to take your left leg just step off almost to, well, let's say 5 o'clock. And as you do, I want a left outward heel palm claw. I want the right hand at this point to circle around counterclockwise into a right inward hand sword. Make sure that the left hand checks underneath it. So you are here, step off claw and hand sword. All right, now the next move is I want you to pivot on your right foot, do a right downward parry. And you notice the hands are coming into that universal position again as I step through with my left leg now to go on the other side. At that point, they separate, we make the hand sword. It circles like it did on the other side, poke and thrust. All right, now I step off this time with my right leg a little bit to 7 o'clock. Claw outward, heel palm claw, and a left inward hand sword. At this point, I want you to pivot on your left foot. Here's that zigzagging X and do an extended outward block with your left hand and chamber your right hand. Circle around, looping overhead strike into a right neutral bow over your head, and at the same time, I want you to do a left inward elbow into a forward bow. At this point, continue circling that fist as the left hand checks and the body positions itself back in for the next strike. Circle it underneath. Step out, looping overhead strike, left forward bow, inward elbow. Let the body 
pivot into a neutral again, bringing that fist and check into play. Wipe the hands as you sweep. From this position, you're just gonna wipe off. As you plant, you're gonna sandwich with the left hand on the right fist. You're gonna hook behind your left foot with your right foot, then you're gonna hop off, cock your hands to your shoulder, and cock your left foot up to your right knee on a 45, and step out to a horse, and then you're done. Watch that last part again. The zigzagging X at this point, keep it circling. Hook, position, push. Come out of it, make your salute, pull, and you are finished with the kata. All right, now let's take this form and delve into it a little bit and come up with some concepts and principles. Let's take some of these techniques and make them workable. All right, now let's take, out of the beginning, we start with a parry, an outward block, a kick and a poke, and an elbow strike. Let's take, and it goes to another elbow and so forth. But let's take just a little bit of it, see what we can come up with. Now I'm gonna take it at an angle so you can see what I'm doing easier. I'm gonna use the help of Sebastian and Ernie George on this. Now, on the first move, let's say that we did an inward parry to a left punch and extend it outward to the right arm. All right, now from here, I can kick and poke Sebastian. And as I kick and poke, I can pull his arm, controlling Sebastian. At the same time, though, I got an elbow to Ernie George behind me. Now, as I plant forward into my horse, I can, once again, I can hit Ernie, and simultaneously, if the camera can pick it up, he can get punched with the same move. So basically, let's slow this down a little bit. We have one, two, three, four. Now, watch what's what's happening up here with Sebastian. We do it again, we go one, two, three. If I pull Sebastian in deep enough, he'll get hit en route to Ernie getting punched with the same fist. Then as I come back, next part of the form, Sebastian gets hit again, Ernie gets hit again and poked this time. So basically, what we're doing then is one, two, three, he gets hit, they both get hit, and again, let's take it a step further. One, two, three, four. They both get it at that time. They both get it again. I can thrust a hand sword here and one down to the groin. If his head comes back up again, I can hammer, catch him here, and Ernie behind me as well. Now let's look at it. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, now. Works well for this video. It gives you an idea of how missling in this particular kata can be used. But that, the same motion can be used beyond missling. Now, when I take this with Sebastian, watch one of the first moves. Now, we've learned this in the other form. As I parry, my bottom hand has its own orbit. And for a good reason. Number one, if he starts to kick, that orbit down there can protect me from that action. All right. So now, we're going to do the punch. He does the left punch. And you notice that I come up and I block Sebastian right at the elbow here. Punch with your left hand, Sebastian. It won't reach. We cancel the width. That's important. Don't block it down below the elbow, because he may slip that elbow right into you. Because if you put too much pressure up here, that can happen. If you block it too far up, again, he can shoot a back knuckle, and he can slip the elbow, or pull me into a punch, whatever. So it's imperative that we catch him right at his elbow. And that as I'm doing this, I'm anticipating the left. So I actually begin to shoot it just a little ahead of him. And I blend with his motion. And I have a double factor if I want to snap the elbow. The hand coming back pop, can snap it. Then I can go into the poke and the kick at the same time. Now, I know that Ernie can kick me, he can punch me. But that's. That's what's the unique thing about the forms. That's that you can say, well, I'm being punched in front, but I'm being grabbed from behind. You could say, well, I'm being punched from the back, in which I offstep, and possibly being punched, uh, grabbed from the front, or whatever. All right? It's how you make it up and design your kata.
All right, now you remember that in the form, we had a move, a technique that went one over the top of the figure eight and then around. All right, let's put that to use to see what we'd come up with. All right, Sebastian shoots an overhead punch. We can make a grab and a break and drop down on the knee as well. Claw his face and back knuckle, lifting Sebastian back up, come back over and punch, dropping Sebastian down again. Now you notice that my hands are crossed at this point, left over right. If Ernie came in, the hands would come out of their cross, make the break at this point, drop down on the knee, setting Ernie up. At that point, the reverse motion would be the claw here in the back knuckle. And as it happened, it would also catch Sebastian again if he decided to come back up out of where he was as I continued on onto Ernie at this point. Watch it again. Let's do it slow. First, we have one, two, three. The hands are crossed. One, two. There it is. See where that foot is down there? And three, if I wanted to break this leg as opposed to Ernie's, I could use it again on Sebastian. Thank you, gentlemen. So if you watch the motion, one, two, three. There's the cross. One, two. Here's where that possibly could hit Sebastian, and three, and so forth. This gives you an idea now of how in close quarters, and knowing the left side of something can have greater value than you can imagine. All right, now let's take a technique in the form, another one. And it looks something like this. By itself, you remember when I came out of this technique in the kata, and then I stepped over and went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. All right, now, if I come out of that kata, Sebastian comes in with a punch, I make my block, shuffle forward, Double him over, right? OK, from this point, hammer the kidney, bam, back of the neck. All right, now I can step off, take my thumb, hook the eye, lifting the head up towards me. And as I lift it up, it sets him up for what? Heel palm strike here and a heel palm claw here at the same time. Now I can twist up, cock my hand, and block him as I step out and block Ernie on this side. And then begin to do it on the opposite side and so forth. Now a little slower, what it looks like is that I came out of this position, made my block, have an option here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I twist, make my hammer, possibly an elbow strike. Ernie comes in, do an inward block on this side, and do the technique again on the opposite side. Thank you, gentlemen. That gives you another idea, then, of how when we make a transition, particularly in this kata, the transition itself is going to have value. That means as I twist to go after the next guy, this hand isn't dead. It has a value to it back there as I step out and so forth. Well, I hope these examples give you a better understanding of how to look for techniques in your forms, all the way from short form one, all the way through form six and upward.
This is the end of this particular tape on form four. There's, like I said, there's thousands of techniques within these katas. You can't go through all of them, but I can help spur you on, give you some ideas, look for them yourself. And there's uh, no greater joy in the martial artist to find, trip onto something by yourself and say, oh, yeah, well, that was there and that could be there and so forth. All right, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next tape. We're going to learn form five. And that tape uses a lot of takedowns. And we're going to stay on the outside of our opponent's body on the initial defensive technique. So I'll look forward to seeing you there.